So what you know when you meet someone and you've got an head full of ideas and they've got an head full of yeah. ideas and then you just sort of bounce off each other. Yeah, but it, all he's doing it through is Are we on now or are we rolling? Yeah, just keep going. What he's doing it through is he's been a good guy all his like is with us with don't get me wrong, he's got experience and he's a he's a boxer and he's a he's a coach, you know, he was pro and everything. But his experience has been through a good person and through boxing and stuff and he's he's getting funding. He told me a story about he got funding. Kid come during holidays and stuff. Once the funding ran out, the lad couldn't afford to come anymore and he went to prison. And it right, was like okay. good. And he also told me about the lads that come in, he wouldn't mind someone like yourself, like me or something. Having them talks, like you you know, I know, I've seen you in that situation, I've seen you at that place. There's no one better than to give that talk to him down at that gym and something like that, same with Chris and with yourself, it's it, it comes first hand, doesn't yeah, it? You definitely. Know? Um, it's it's something I can't wait to get back into. So since lockdown, we've not been able to do anything because all our all our work is done in schools or in prisons or youth clubs or and everything's been shut. So that's that's why they started because it was we're about getting messages out there. How can we get messages out there if everything's locked down? Yeah. So let's just get people's stories documented. Yeah, and... I get that. Yeah, yeah. Well, once that's why, like, like you say, you'll be a pro at this. You've done three. I just ain't been ready to talk about mine. Yeah, you yeah. know because it's I'll tell you the first one I did that were a family member was a cafe and it were more through business and now I've come through business and yeah. it were kind of good I let off a little bit about my past but not too much he knows me as a family member didn't need to <clears throat> but the one with uh, Jack Sunderland at the training cave that one kind of brought a bit of anxiety up if I'm being honest just because I ain't really spoke about it I'm married I've got children and stuff like that and that were kind of an hard, an hard thing for me to do because yeah. he wanted the rawness like yourself like how did boxing help and stuff like you'll know as well Chris because you've been well involved in boxing aren't you and so with me following you now like I've seen a bit of training and stuff like that is that for is that like a bit of an escape for yourself or yeah okay he's just saying to right. now. <laughs> he has hasn't he <laughs> I just no, I just because I follow him like I said no, before no, it started no, yeah. he were like he don't know it but he mentored me well, a little let, bit let you know. me, yeah, are you are you so we're here to talk about certain stuff, you know, about where we met yeah. and stuff like that. But I understand people having reservations if you're starting out, if you're in a job where people don't know, that sort of thing. Mm. But the reason I've asked you to at this stage is because things are going really well for you. And for, for me and Chris, it's more because of our past. Yeah. The way that we're able to use that as a positive now. And that's why we are getting recognition. But I understand no, for you... You know, you're you're no, wanting people to trust you and stuff. And it is kind of the same though, because a lot of people where it started out in Batley, Dewsbury, stuff, Bradford areas that I'm from, I think and I, I believe they see me go and uh, start having more of a child once I come out of prison this, five years this ago. Is, this is exactly my point. So I, if you were just starting out, fair enough. But I think you're in a position now where yeah. you're absolutely smashing life. Yeah. Your company but is that, doing ridiculously yeah. well. It come from being an underdog, like people yeah. seeing how bad I did years ago and yeah, that. And yeah, they were just yeah. like, little jobs, they were willing to help me. Do you know, yeah. like you said, it's like a good thing when people see how we're doing good. They wanted to help, they wanted to tag me in jobs. Like now I get a bit more worried if new customers kind of know, do you know, and stuff like that. Do you know, like... What my past or what but I, I think people appreciate it more. You yeah. know, if you if you succeed in life and you've never had a struggle, then congratulations. If you've if you've gone through some shit and yeah. you've had to fight your way to get <laughs> back to the stage where everyone else starts off as standard and then keep on fighting your way up to achieve what other people have achieved that haven't been through as much. Yeah. I think there's some honour in that. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I'm trying to not like like I say take pride in that also yeah. as in this because as you say I always take pride in my business and stuff like that where, you, where your business plan started do you know what I mean that's what you've got to remember yeah yeah we all had to be in a position where we had nothing and then I think sometimes that makes you fight harder you know so we we all met in what 2013 <coughs> 14 yeah. slash 2013 14 so um two actually we're <coughs> we're a week away so on the 8th of August, 2013, I went to prison. I got a 40-month sentence and rocked up at Armley, did two weeks there and then moved to Wheelston. I was in Wheelston for six months. Yeah. And that's where the three of us met. But it's just mad to think about seven years ago. It's almost seven years <coughs> no, ago to the day since what, I went. What was mad with me on way over was how we must have connected in a certain way for us to talk and 
and now see each other to now be as far as we've come now it must have it must have something must have come from back yeah. then to see or it must have been that we were definitely going to sit here at some point and share these experiences as we did share that experience i i believed yeah. you know yeah this is it i remember <laughs> i remember meeting chris because i was on sea wing green side of sea wing i was up on top floor um and you were one of the first people i spoke to on that wing and then after a couple of months of being there, I moved over to G Wing, and that's where mm. I met Ben. Yeah. And um, and then <coughs> not long after that, I was moved out. I went to Preston. Yeah. Um, so I got put over in Preston. Um, and then when we came home, I think I saw you were going to recovery meeting. Yeah. Um, and that's how we got in touch again. I can't remember how we spoke when we first came home. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember how we kept in we touch. We said, all right. We said, I'm, I'm, you know what? You use my services. You were stuck. You'd see me. Oh, I think when you I broke down on the motorbike. You broke down on the motorway. I came, at the time, I just started my business, so I didn't have a license. My partner drove, yeah. and I bought the van, and we were doing it like that. Silly o'clock in morning. Silly o'clock in morning. <laughs> it was stuck up motorway, and we picked our big motorbike up. Oh, and it was a big old lump as well. I yeah, think. yeah. It was, I think, I've, I can't remember if I let you in front, and I holded it in back and stopped out. I can't remember, but we saved you, and you've, yeah. lose, you've used me many times since. New yeah, bed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is it. Now I don't want to jump too far ahead because I, I know I want to. I want to <coughs> talk about the stuff that you've done, but um, how? What? I, I'm not asking for like intimate details, but what was going on for for us free to meet? How did you end up where you ended up? What was going on? So for me, um, that's last big sentence that I did. That uh, I'd spent my life pretty much from being 12 year old addicted to drugs. Uh, I started using heroin when I was really really young. And as a result of that, spent the majority of my adult life from being a child in and out of institutions. So leading up to that point there, um, that was as a result of my addiction. And that's that's how I found myself on Sea Wing, on Greenside. Um, but it was a, a traumatic sentence for me. That, that one was a real eye-opener because at that point, um, up until that point, it had pretty much been a game in and out of prison. I'd used it as an elf camp. It, it ensured that uh, I was pretty much stayed alive. I got free regular meals, got exercise, um, and it gave me a, a break from lifestyle that I was living, which was really detrimental to my li to my health uh, through injecting drugs and other stuff. I'd, I'd contracted uh, hepatitis C, I'd got uh, damaged my veins massively, um, and it, it were impacting my life. So leading up to that um, that time there, that was just a consequence of, uh, of my addiction and, and pretty much how I was living my life when we'd met there at that point. But I think definitely, like, like it's been highlighted, I think when people meet, there's a connection that's made. Most definitely. Uh, yeah. And for me, I always knew that there were more to my life than that, you know, and yeah. I always wanted there to be. And one of the things that really I love Ben for is normally I've got an answer for everything, you know, and, we, and whether he remembers it or not, we were uh, in a sort of a quiz. This is what I'm going to say. Yeah, we're, we're in a <laughs> quiz and we're, we're, we're working together and we're answering questions. Um, we're both bright lads and he asked me a question that I couldn't answer and it was like, you're a smart guy, why do you use heroin? And I'm like, oh. what the fuck? But <laughs> obviously, as a result of me using heroin, I end up in prison every time, you know. But nobody had asked me in in that simplistic way, why do you use heroin? And I and I, I think I come up with fucking some wise answer that some of most creative people are, are addicts and you know fucking <laughs> you have drug problems. But yeah, I, but I even then seen him as a so creative. You no, know, like I said, was. I don't know if it was turned on then or not, but he was telling me about, as he was learning Spanish, I put his TV in. Now thinking about it, I don't know if he'd have had his TV taken off him now. If it <laughs> were, if it were that wise, I didn't know. Yeah. Like, Why are you now Spanish? Because I'm on basic. Yeah, how <laughs> slow is, how t with his words now and how mature he is, maybe he might have been just plugging me then. No, nah, no, nah, it was definitely no. an intention yeah. to Because he was always learn. learning. And yeah. Yeah. I remember how I met Chris, he was coming, he might not remember like, and as he just said, then I may not remember if I asked him that question. And he was walking down landing one time and he had his canteen sheet. Now he walked down, he went, check this, check this. And 
you know what? I think they'd had you off what, 12 p or something on your canteen sheet. <laughs> and they were calling them up on it. And I just thought, it's it goes... money when you're on 12 no, but, that's 10% of your But it was like, it? if that 12 p have to do it every single time, yeah. I know as long in my business I'll go, I think if they have me for 12 p <laughs> or I'm like, I just love to offer a service and smile about it. So I don't really taste. But it stayed with me. Do you know, yeah. like the simple fact thing. It was the mathematics behind it and the stuff behind it. So even then, well, he answered that question. He was still... It was still doing something. It was still it was numbers or this or It was the equation. I'll tell you what it was exactly. It was the equation of, the, of saving the money from the TV. That I yeah. told you. That said to you, look, you know, I don't want that TV. It's, it's preventing me from learning. It's As costing if, me money. Remember. Do you know what I mean? It's costing me money. And I showed him that if I didn't have that TV for the rest of my sentence, this is I'd much. save my shower gels, you know, that, yeah. for it. Yeah. I'd, use, yeah. I'd go through this amount of shower gel in this amount of time. And that's always I mean? stayed with me. So, you know, I can use that to it get... We're still taking the money off food. him for the TV licence and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, the TV, that's it. It might have been 50 you. pence or something, I'm not sure. A quid a week it was. But it was like, why is this that's still coming... That's a shower gel. <laughs> why is this still coming off when I've been... So that's... So we were having no TV, we were learning different... He were doing quizzes yeah. and he couldn't answer simple Ben, a simple question of why he took everything. <laughs> yeah. And now, but it's, that it's a hard thing to me. answer though, isn't it? Yeah, that always you know, I, me. I, I, I used drugs for 10 years. Um, I, I, I didn't use drugs, I abused drugs for 10 years. The first, maybe the first few months, I might have used drugs and then it was just, it gradually went from nightclubs on a weekend to nightclubs and then after parties and then. I'm not really feeling too healthy at work, so I'm just going to have a bit of coke. Or mm. and then it, nice. once once it was normal for me to use coke at work, then it was I'll take some ket with me, and I was doing ket at work, wow. and, and that was ten years. Whatever job I had, um, it was always the same, and I'd always start a new job thinking I won't do it at work, and then you might do like a day or something like that, and then it'll be well. Today went okay, so. Um, so I mean, I believe I'm quite fortunate because, like I said mys myself, I also took drugs from being age of 14 to my last sentence, which I believe I might have been around 21, 22. I got out, I did, I got seven, five years, I got an extra year added on inside, so I did three years out of my sentence. But since I've been out now, that's it, five years of absolutely. So, but I did all, it all, all three of us. So when when did when did you come home? I came in January 2015. What about you? I come home, oh God, I can't remember. Do you know what I should remember as well? Because the day that I got out with my dad's funeral. Right. But it was, Did they bring that forward for you or was no, it just coming no, to no. Him? So, um, my dad died six weeks before I got out. So last time I saw him, we like, um, I was with, with four officers from Wheelston on like a dog lead yeah, extended yeah. chain. I can remember you saying he was poorly when we Yeah, and cancer had just ravaged him, it had ate him. And I remember trying to convince him that this time it was going to be different. I'd uh, sort of got this rail track qualification that they were doing there. You know, I'd come off a of methadone and, and I had every sort of intention. Uh, uh, what, I, what I said, I believed, you know. I, yeah. But it was like. But you probably said it before, but never yeah. really fully believed it yourself. Well, I said it before. The thing, the ir the ironic thing is that the, the the nature and power of addiction is. I believed it when it was coming out of my mouth. I believed it. I said, "I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this." Um, you know, I'm not gonna use drugs again. And that's like comes back to that when when Ben asked me that question about why do you use drugs? You know, I use drugs because I'm an addict, and I understand that now. Mm -hmm. Before, I didn't understand that. You know, I, f I knew that I had a problem with drugs because I'd had a problem with them for a long, long time, but I didn't understand the depth of being an addict and what that meant and how that affected my life. I, I wasn't aware of that, you know. So how did you find out? Because I, I, w I, <laughs> I moved to the recovery wing on um, G Wing at Wheelstone, yeah. but then when <clears> I moved <throat> to Preston, I, I went. You had to go around the prison. It was an open prison. You had to go around and register at like the library and all yeah. the, the gym and all these other things. And I've gone in the library and I could hear somebody. And I just thought, I'm sure I know that voice. And it was the guy. Well, there was a, three or four of us who spoke in Armley, and it was one of them. Yeah. A, a guy we used to call <coughs> Spanish. He wants Spanish. He was just looks the Spanish, most English person. Person. I think. He's, I think he's. I th it might be his surname, but he was called Glenn. Uh, proper Glenn. wheeler dealer, gold tooth. tooth yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you know him? No, no, no. Oh, I was right. thinking. <laughs> yeah, it's Spanish. just old Glenn, Spanish. Yeah, yeah, Spanish yeah. Glenn. Spanish yeah. Glenn. Um, 
and it was him. So I went, I went through and sort of collared him. And then he said, um, you need to pretend you're an addict and you'll get on this, these, it were like wooden huts on top of each other. So it were two floors. Um, and they've got their own toilet, shower, wooden bed, none of that metal stuff. It's like a little wet room all inside your pad. Yeah. It's like a little ensuite room. So Where's like, this at? This is, this is at, Pre at HMP Kirkham in yeah. Preston. Oh, I've heard of Kirkham, yeah. So I, I, I go and I say, oh yeah, I've drug charge, you know. And I went to prison with no sort of thought about me being an addict. And I've got put in this this room and it was ace and I loved it. I had a wardrobe and everything. And I'm just like, yeah, this is, this is all right, this. And you had a key to your door so you could be out of your pad up till three o'clock in the morning if you want. But yeah. the, the block was locked yeah. so you couldn't get outside. Yeah. So we'd have sort of PS2 football, FIFA tournaments yeah. and stuff. So it won't, it won't that bad when I was on that wing. And then I had to go to an NA meeting and I went and I sat and I listened to a guy called Angelo tell me about how he had lost two of his fingers uh, from injecting and he had this big scar on his arm, like shaped like an eye that had opened up while he was using. And the ambulance came to take him and he just wa he wanted to use his last bit of heroin because he could see his veins. And they was just like, we can't let you do it. And he said, oh, well, you'll have to go then. So they had to go wait outside, let him use his heroin and then come back in and take him to hospital. And I was just sat there and I was just thinking, fuck me, I only used a bit of coke. Mm. How, how am I sat here saying I need help? No, but it's... And I, I left and I never went back and it was probably a few days. Uh, no, it was a week just before the second. So it was every Thursday, external people came in and they had an NA meeting inside the prison. So it, I think it was the Wednesday before the second Thursday and I bumped into him and he was like, oh, you, you want at the last one? I was like, yeah, mate, it's not, it's not really for me. Everyone was hugging and stuff. So I went to the woman and said, I'm not, I lied about being an addict. I, I just want to get off. So that's, so, that's so how So did you realise you were an addict when you needed to get back on that nice No, way. it was when she sat me down and said, tell me about your well, life. And then you realised. And then all. I'm explaining stuff to her and she was like, are you fucking kidding well, me? Do you think that's how normal people live? No, they don't. Exactly. Like, what do you think with party drugs? Like now I work and I, I, I sit, because I don't do nothing and I work and that's... I see it and they're like, yeah, we do this. It's come that recreation and that for people. The cool thing is, yeah, it's yeah. like, no, you're only using 40% of your body when you could be 100%. Yeah. You're doing this, yeah, but I can still go to it. Yeah, but, yeah, but you're running on 40%, 20%. Yeah. You yeah. could be elite. You could this be something special. Exactly. You could be use your life to your full potential and you're not doing that. So what, what, why was that your last prison sentence? What was different? My, mine for me, I don't know if you know, but in your, there's, <clears throat> there's meant to be a lot of scary people. There's this, it's a scary place. Now, yeah, it is. When I first went in, I suffered with depression. I was taking drugs. I used to go out all night, take cocaine, go in, not really bothering with my youngest daughter, who's now nine. She's called Maisie. I didn't bother with her. I was a bit of a bugger to her mum. So I just wanted to be in prison. I couldn't handle life. Went in there, suffered depression. My uh, baby's mum at the time, she left me. I realised I've got to get on with this. I've got a child outside, so I got on with it. I, I got into loads of fights. I wasn't really bothered. I just, I went through it the hard way, but it was a coping mechanism for me. I got shipped around different prisons and stuff like that, and I ended up in a Wilson after around two years. So I had a year left to serve him. Well, at the time, I was still getting days added on, stuff like that. And then it, it come to, in Wilson about 10 months before my sentence, after all fights and stuff like that, I got speaking to an officer called Mr. Bramford. I don't know if any of you have heard him. Mr. Who? Bramford, he was, he was on F-Wing, but his partner, Mrs. Bramford, was on G-Wing. She was right small. I remember her on yeah, G-Wing. Yeah, well, her husband was on F-Wing, okay. and he got talking about all Iron Man ones he does and stuff for charity. And I set a charity run up in there. And uh, at the time, I still had a lot of days added on. And... Uh, I just started started being good and just doing good stuff and stuff like that. And note no, no was scary to me at all. But when it comes to night and my door closed at around six, they used to, uh, I haven't really told anyone this. And I, I used to have a little cry now and again. And it, it was, uh, there was this thing, it was like an eagle piggle. Have you ever seen eagle piggle? I don't know if you've got kids, it's like a program. And a song comes on, it goes, now it's time to say good night. And I used to listen to that half of my head. I'm thinking, and just tell my daughter to go away when I'm, and I just cried and I used to be like, not one person in here bothers me, not one thing, but to miss that child, it just bothered me. Like yeah. me growing up, like probably asked Chris that question why he, he took everyone growing up because my dad's an heroin addict and I never knew why. I don't really see him, I've seen him, I can go see him tomorrow, but I never knew the reason why when he had children, when he had us. So my main goal in life was 
just to be, when I got to this point, I, I made a change. I had 10 months left. Some out of bodies coming to Wheelston to talk about business with me. And I've always, it just opened my mind thinking, oh, when I was younger, I used to do paintings and try and sell them. I used to draw like little ice cream carts and think if I can make an ice cream thing, I can sell ice creams. I used to always buy and sell stuff. I thought, I'm a businessman. <laughs> you know, I never knew it. Yeah. But most of all, I'm a dad. Oh, none of this is bothering me. And all these big, scary people, no bothers me. I can sit here. I can put my feet in hot water and I can watch telly and it don't bother me. But the one thing that bothers me every single day and why I wake up every morning is my daughter. So what I need to do is be a dad, do this. And that's what changed it for me. There and then, I felt like a man. Do you know what, though? That worked same for me. So I got a letter and it were, It came just after Christmas. Uh, but my, my little girl, who was 10 at the time, mm. she was 10. So it's come through in her handwriting. And when I started taking drugs, she was two. So I didn't start till I was 20. And she, um, she'd, I'd see her on a Friday evening. So she'd come and stay over and then she'd go back to her mum's on Saturday. So that's the only time I didn't take drugs towards the end because I was on it all day, every day. Yeah. So if she messaged me on a Monday or on a Wednesday, if yeah. it had snowed and said, can we go sledging? I'd have to make an excuse to not see her. Oh, yeah. So she wrote this letter and it was like, hi, daddy, it's Christmas Eve, Eve. I'm so excited. She told me she'd been on this like residential type thing with school and I'm sat and I'm reading it. And um, it said, but I need to ask, do you actually love me? Mm. Oh. And I was just like, oh, wow. and I sat and I cried. And I, I I can't remember if I carried on reading, but I think I stopped for a while while because I, I was physically mm. upset. Um, and then it was like, I asked you if we could do this and you told me you were doing this. And I asked this and you, and she had all these memories of examples of times where I'd made an excuse to not see her. Oh, wow. So I don't know if she understands why. Yeah. But that's irrelevant. What she knows is I made excuses to not see her. There's no reason good enough There's no reason. for that. Do you know what I mean? Um and that's the reason I moved to G Wing. It yeah. was it was then. Um I was I was trying to get Ket brought in on a visit. I yeah. was trying to, I had a plan and I think uh, we've all tried somehow yeah, I've tried getting something it, on the, the, the thing oh, is, this is this is now looking back behavioural behaviour wise, like the addict. So it was, let's just get some cat brought in because it's my 30th birthday, on 4th of December. I don't want you know, I'm, I'm going to spend it here, so I'll just get some cat and I'll just have it on my birthday and then that'll be You're it. You're not an addict. No, There's not an addict but then it went it, from, it? let's just get a, get a bit of cat brought in. And then it was, well, if we bring some spice in as well, we could sell the spice yeah. and then that'll pay for the next lot of cat. Yeah. I was like, already, You're getting cat again. it's multiple sessions rather than just for my birthday. But that wasn't, that was never a plan. And I didn't realise what I was doing until it was spelled out for me. Yeah, you know, half a year later, um, but yeah, that that was it, and I, I made some promises to myself, and I made some promises to her, and that's when I started putting little bits into place to change my behaviour because I've been to prison before, and I came home, never did any work on myself again, didn't know yeah. I had a problem, just for it was part of my lifestyle, and I moved to my auntie's in Brid, and I probably went about four five months not with nothing yeah. just drinking with some of the sort of people my age that she knew over that yeah. end, that end and then i came back for someone's birthday and ended up getting absolutely wrecked in leeds and then taking this stuff back to you out now no this oh, was this was getting... in between so 2008 so, i went our, to prison i was a bit rope is getting out like the first night after all that 10 months of saying i wasn't gonna do all anything the first night i got out yeah or it might be in the second i took drugs right the second night i got out and it was yeah yeah like when I was in prison, I was doing so well. I had a year added on. So after that was six months, what the officer did for me, Mr. Bramford, come in and pass me a letter one day. And it, I told him all this and oh, I can't wait to get out and I'm not miss. After all the stuff I did for that 10 months and did the charity event and all that I set up, it got me 15 days knocked off my sentence. And it got me out the day before my daughter's fourth birthday. And I hadn't oh, seen wow. her before she was even one year old. Yeah. You know, so I, I didn't know, she didn't know who I was. She still says to me now, because she lives with me, she says, when I come out of nursery that morning, I, I didn't know how I knew you were my dad, but I just knew you were my dad. You know, and I stood there waiting, <laughs> but I've still, even up there, there were a slippery slope. In five years of being out, I've took drugs three times. So I yeah. can't I can't say that I ain't, I ain't done them. You know, and that's why, like now I know, and I'm full of, that's why I ain't done that for so many years, because in that first year, so yeah. far, I've, I've done them, you know, so I can't, 
But I believe if I hadn't done it and I hadn't talked about it, which in the past I hadn't been willing to, then I wouldn't, like the first, within the first six months I did it, I had to tell my, I told my, some people might think I'm a bit this way, I told my probation officer for it. Now that could have really, could have nearly sunk me, but, yeah. but being a woman she was and stuff like that, she like, she made a record of it, which I was a bit peed off about at first. She put it down and stuff, and but she helped me with it, and she was like, I'm glad you've done it, and she got me off probation early and everything, and it was just like, yeah, so. Yeah. I, I was lucky, <coughs> I, 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 because I was in an open prison, I was getting home leaves, so I can't remember if it was once a month or twice a month, but on a weekend, <coughs> I'd get to come home Friday to Monday. So I was got, there used to be a, an NA meeting at the, um, oh, I always forget what it's called, but on the back end of town so as you go under your Mab road Gate Mabgate Mills I used to go to that meeting every Saturday well every Saturday I was home I'd make sure I went to that meeting mm. um, and what I also did is I went into pubs now Barbara the woman who saved my life the, the drug worker from um, Kirkham she always said if you sit in a barber's chair for too long you'll get your hair cut and, but mm. I'm one of these where I need to make sure that at some point I'm going to be in a pub because there's going to be a wedding, there's going to be a funeral, yeah, there's going to yeah, be a birthday. Definitely. And if it's someone's birthday, I don't want to not be there yeah. because I can't be around alcohol. Yeah. So whilst whilst I was on home leaves, I went into pubs for meals and drank pop. But my brother did that for the first 10 months for him being yeah. clean now, for the first couple of months. You were still going into bruises and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, how are you doing? I, I needed to, because I needed being in a pub and drinking pop to be more normal than going into a pub and sniffing coke. Yeah. But when I went into the toilets of certain pubs, I would be just like, oh, you know. You know what he said to me the other day? He goes, he's here. knocked on head now. He goes, because he was doing it for about four or five months. He goes, I'm not turning it away. I went, why? He goes, because there's only so many times you can try and put your hand in a fire without getting your, getting your hand burnt. Yeah, he fine. goes, and now we don't. I think the lockdown were good, good for him, do you know? Because now it's just complete 10 months. That's yeah. another good thing about us being together because I don't know if you know my brother. We're open where to put him in touch. Yeah. And I know he follows you as well. And he mentions it to me and like, that's your mate from prison. He's look at him doing it. Have you seen him doing that? You really know him. And I'm like, yeah, go on. I know yeah. him. Yeah, he's like, oh, wow, wow, wow. Do you know, so it's yeah, it's yeah. nice now where from here now where, where this is going to go <laughs> from here. Yeah, you know. and your brother's going to be a good one to speak to in future because he's absolutely smashing life at moment. Oh. He is. He's doing really well. What What was different for you? So going back to that question, what made it last time I went to prison? It wasn't the last time that I went to prison. It was the last substantial sentence that I did. Um, I came out with quite a, a large chunk of license, half my sentence to do one license, and the first day that I got out with my dad's funeral, like I said, and I couldn't stay clean, he, even for that. I'd, I'd phoned up and I'd asked somebody to make sure that there was some flake there for me because in my mind, as long as it wasn't heroin and crack, it wasn't drugs, you know, I didn't understand. Yeah. So within half an hour of getting out and being home, I'd used. And um, by end at night, I'd picked up heroin. I'd gone on to the beat to look for a working girl and, and we're smoking heroin in, in a phone box together. And then from that, I uh, started committing little bits of crime again. Addiction started. And and I got five 28-day recalls, which is all you can get. And my probation worker, it was like there were a series of events that went on. And, and I'd had five recalls for 28 days. And every time I got out, I just started using again. But what happened is... Um, I'd end up getting an infection from injecting in my groin, which at first, it was that bad, my leg swelled up like an elephant, so I couldn't put any weight on it. And um, I still couldn't stop using, you know, and it got to a point where I were, I were in tears, I were in complete, I was just agony. Wow. And uh, I got taken to hospital, and I, I'd accepted at that point that I had um, sort of DVTs, you know, I damaged my main artery, and at very least, I was going to lose my leg or my life. But I still couldn't stop. I was still sneaking out of uh, hospital because I had money to go score. Uh, people were taking liberties. I was getting beaten up by dealers and everything. I'm there in my hospital pyjamas. I had an intravenous antibiotic thing because luckily it wasn't DVTs that I'd got. It was just a cellulitis infection from pushing um, bacteria into my skin and um, that's why my leg had swelled up so big. 
But as that had cleared and I was discharged from hospital, I'd missed my probation appointments. So obviously my mum's my mum's in bits. She's like, wow, you're going to lose your leg, you know, your dad's just died, all this is going on. Come home, because she built with me out because I'd made her that poorly from me being around her, from me using drugs and stealing off her and everything. She'd said, you have to go. But when this had happened to my leg, she said, you need to come home. We need to get this sorted. And my probation worker fell in line with that as well. And I were having to do, because I were a PPO offender, I were having to do um, urine samples. Just mention what PPO is. So that's a, a priority prolific offender. So that's somebody that continues wow. to commit the same crimes. Yeah. Uh, and as part of my license conditions means I have to provide clean urine samples which I can't do. That's why I've had the 25, um, sorry, the five 28 day recalls. So that's why no matter what I'd say, I'm going to, I won't use again. I won't use again within 10 minutes of being back out at, on road. I'd be, I'd be scoring. I'd be looking for drugs. So I'm having to do these samples. My probation workers under the impression that because I've been in hospital, these samples are now going to be clear. So when they've come back positive for heroin and cocaine, she's like, oh. my mum's like, oh. but the guy that will facilitate in the volunteer, he, he would taking the urine samples. So he he said to my probation worker, and you tried Narcotics Anonymous. So me being manipulative and clever, addict, I've just did the anonymous bit, and I thought, yeah. I've fucking fallen on my feet here. This guy's just got me another using. Do you know what I mean? He's got me a way to carry on using here. Because, because you can say you're going. Yeah, because they, they don't check. know any different because it's yeah. anonymous. So yeah. I'll just go, I'll pick up some leaflets, I'll get some, so I'll pick up the jargon. I'll come, my mum's, you need to wow. move back in. Do you know what I mean? My mum's saying, look, you know, you need to move back in. She's going to give me money to get to these meetings. Do you know, everyone's going to be supporting me. I'm going to be at a carry on Is that how you really felt? Because yeah. I look at people now and I think, you're blagging it. And people that's, are like, no. I'm thinking, he's blagging it. That, that's and, the power uh, of addiction. It, it, like, I was that powerless. Yeah. You know, I didn't believe, I didn't want to stop. I didn't believe I could stop. Uh, and, and it was to a point where I, I, were, I were hobbling around, you know, with this big fat leg from injecting. Uh, and all I'm seeing in these Narcotics Anonymous meetings is the anonymous aspect, which means I'll be able to carry on using and, and have the support of people around me. My probation worker, I'll, I'll be able to blag it with her. I'm just living for that, that exact moment, just just so I can carry on using. I even took my brother to my first meeting, you know, so he could validate and back me up and say, look, he's trying, mum, you know, and it was just so contrived and... What we're doing, we're all to carry on my addiction. So luckily for me, I went to this meeting and there was somebody there that were credible, you know, that were from my past that had been involved with sort of selling drugs. I used to buy crack off them. So what, what made them credible? Just because you could relate to them? Somebody that you looked up to or? So what it what is, is, I already had a, like a, a preconceived idea of what these meetings were going to be like. And, and I believed that the answer to my addiction were more drugs, whether it be methadone, subutex, something like that. I didn't, I didn't think that it would to go to a meeting and to talk about my problems. I thought, yeah. who the fuck does that? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Who talks about the problems? Yeah. You don't let, you don't talk about no, shit no, like no, that. Yeah, do you no, know what I mean? Yeah. You keep it inside. Yeah. So I'm thinking they're all fucking weirdos. These people. Do you know what I mean? They're all like, I don't know. Do you know? And um. Yeah, I had this idea that it wasn't going to be for me. These people weren't going to use drugs like me. They weren't going to be in and out of prison all their lives. And uh, when I walked through the door, somebody were there that I used to be involved in in selling drugs with. So they were a credible character. They'd yeah. lived like me. They'd had life experience like me. But they were there. And he pulled me to a side and he said, listen, you know, he said, there's three things guaranteed if you carry on using, Chris and your life, this is what your life will be, and that'll be jails, institutions, hospitals, and death. Mm. You'll carry on using, that's your life. That's and guaranteed, do not it? Yeah, misery a long way. So I sat down, and then when I was listening to people, I was like, wow, I was blown away, because it was like they were telling my story. My voice was coming out of their mouths. Do you know, and I'm thinking, fucking hell, man. I'm the only person, I, I honestly believe from being a child, 
that I was the only person that felt the way that I did. It's a weird oh, feeling, wow. isn't it, when you realise that you're not unique. Yeah, yeah. And that's your thought process. Hundreds of thousands yeah. of people all go through the exact same thing. I, it was a really sort of awakening moment mm, for me, that. That's it. And, and, and coming into that, were like a weight were lifted off me. Because I've, I've seen people, I'd, I'd had experiences with them before, used drugs with them before, but I were looking at them and they were happy. To me, no one ever got clean. You went to jail or you died. <laughs> That's how it is. You don't get clean and, and live happily ever after. Do you know? And when I seen these people doing that, and I seen the, the courage that they had and, and how brave they were being and being honest and expressing how they were feeling, and talking about how I was feeling, yeah, I wanted a piece of that. Yeah. So from that point on, fortunately, I ain't been back to jail, and hopefully I won't ever go back. Not. Yeah. I go in sometimes to do narcotics anonymous meetings and to share my experience. Yeah. No, uh, that's that's amazing. That that is truly amazing because I've never, like I say, when I asked Chris before, he didn't give me the response that he just give obviously us and everybody else. Then why and how and that. So we didn't, I've never ever listened to it as deep as that. I don't know if you have with the work you do, or obviously you've lived it and know it. I've never, but what what now where we're speaking, like I've learned something else about now though, like going on to my brother, now I can respect what he's doing a bit more because I've never met anyone. You probably will have done in your line of work now, Chris, but for me, I had to go to prison. All my friends now, well, new friends are really how they are, but other ones that kept involved, a lot of them are dead and I'm only 28 and uh, most others are serving like 18 year, 10 year, 15 year. And I got seven with my guilty plea five. So my, ne my next one said, if you, I ever see you in front of me again for a violence offence, you, you'll be going away for a long time now. But I can respect my brother a little bit more now because I've never met anyone that, like you say, you said prison or dead, that have done it without, and it just shows that as with what Chris does is work in your work, you don't have to go to prison or end up dying. My brother's been clean 10 months now and he ain't, he ain't died and he ain't been to prison. Yeah. And I don't, I'd use probably do, but I don't know how people... I think it's that understanding. Like I didn't know I had a problem until I went to prison and then I was lucky enough to be put in front of somebody who had the skills to spell it out for me. She identified that in me and explained to me about my life, <coughs> about how I think about me. She She sat me down and told me about me. And if I would, so when I was in Wheelston, I, I got moved out and I was meant to be going to Kurt Levington, which is meant to be the best cat in the country. So I moved to, um, went to the front desk and there was an officer there called Mr. Brown. I don't know if I, either of you met him. He was like no. a front desk officer. Um, Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown, yeah. He sounds like someone from Reservoir Dogs. Do you know what, me. is he shortest with like round fit? No, big no. black guy. Oh no, I don't know him. So he... I'm sure he was on his day off and me and him had had lots of conversations before because I managed to... So when I found out you could have a PS2, I got one sent into Armley, which stayed in my property until I moved to Wheelston and then it was just in my property. And I was like, how have you got this if you're not enhanced? Yeah. So I managed to blag it so I got to keep my PS2, but that was with him. So we were sort of... Yeah, yeah I hope he don't get into trouble. <laughs> no, but you can imagine... You <coughs> can I just imagine... But he was, a good, he was a good guy. He was a good guy, is what I'm saying. And he was on his day off and when I got to the reception, he said to me... Um, you know, he kept saying Kirkham. I was like, I'm going to Kirk Levington. He was like, you're not, you're going to Kirkham. I was like, I'm not going to Kirkham because all I've ever heard is Kirkham shit, it's strict. People get kicked out of there constantly. And you all hear that about them all so there. I was just like, I'm not, I'm not going. So he pulled me to one side and said, you can either go to Kirkham now and then in six weeks you'll be on your home leaves or you can go back to your pad and wait six weeks to get to Kirk Lev. So I was like, you have to go I'm there. off, I'm off. So I went and then the guy in the library told me to do this. The guy doing the share made me think this. That made me go to the woman who told me about my life. All these little things happened. And I was talking to someone yesterday about um, coincidence, about influence. Is it a high power? Is it just these things just happened in that sequence? But I was meant to be going to a different prison, but everything fell into place to land me to in Kirkham to meet that woman, to find out well, I had a problem. You are making butterflies in my belly now. And I don't really get like that, yeah? yeah. Well, I do, but not over with three men sat here we are now. <laughs> but the way we all met and the way, and where sat here now, that I, I believe that had to happen for a reason. Yeah. It had to, it's like, the events that we've done since then, like my coping mechanism is my children and business, that, 
this is what I'm going to get on to a little bit. Like, that's my addiction now. You know, I'm addicted to to work. I work. Mm. I've got to take my phone calls. I've got to do a, I'm addicted to it. Like, that's what, like, I don't know if you'll have heard this, Chris, but they're like addicts. I've only heard it. I don't know not about it to say, stop taking everything. You start drinking. You stop drinking. You start to yeah, substitute you, you, one you for replace, one. Yeah. And yeah, I think so I've done... Addiction manifests its, uh, itself in, in different areas and it's, it's like anything that changes how you feel can become a problem. Right. So like the, the excitement, the thrill and the obsession around work, people become workaholics, don't they? And I believe that's, that's, that's what not I've always a good now. thing though because you need to be careful what happens if if you have an injury where you have to have time off work, your head's mm. not going to deal with that. Yeah, I don't yeah. that's it now with like my partner home today. I got home and I felt like, Oh yeah, I thought the best thing for me to do is come back out because when I'm at work, I'm happy. And when I'm this I'm brings thinking, me. This is this is a nice point to to be coming at because like I was thinking about things to say when I come here and about uh, a question to ask, you know, and that that would be what does success to be successful? What does that look like to you? Do you know, someone said to me over there from the training cave on last part, Jackie said to me, "You look really successful now." I don't believe, because there's still parts of my life I'm not happy with. So and do you beat the nail on the head then? For me, mm. success equals happiness. Happiness, yeah. And for me to say that I'm happy with my life and with everything yeah. in my life. When we went out there earlier and you said that, yeah, I said, is there any mimics to you? Is there any of it? And you went, nothing. You went, yeah, happy. Yeah, I'm happy. happy. You're like successful. Said, there's, there's, there's things that cause me stress in my life that are out of my control. But the, that's the fact that matter. They're out of my control, and and if I don't try controlling them, and I just be the best person that I can, can be, be, that's how I live my the, life every the, single yeah, day. Then, then that's you that. know then that every vibe you put out, everything you do is a positive one. That's another thing for me stopping drugs because I never knew what was reality and what wasn't, and I took them every single day, all the time. Ain't bath to go to live everywhere. I sniff cocaine, ecstasy, MCAT when not around, but cocaine, and I used to be now else, but I used to go weird. I used to think. I know this doesn't sound really bad, but I just think, do I need to get a knife? Do I need to do something here? Am I going to have to hurt They're doing something to me funny. And I, I used to have to, like, a laser with a friend to say, is he doing something to me? And I never knew. And I'd either go home or I'd stay or I'd fight a break or I'd stab someone or someone would do something. And I'd never know. But now I know because I'm 100%. Of, only with my partner and that, though, because I work quite a lot and I don't know if I've overworked and I've not... Am I just working too much and not giving my family enough time? But I know that's a, a natural and a normal stress to know that it's not about drugs, it's not about this, it's about am I working too much? Do I need to give my family a bit more time? And I, and I suppose that's how a normal man... Balance, my, balance, my balance, balance is key. But on that now, I know now if I'm walking out of the summer or with business or anything and someone's being towards myself or something, I know that I am being a genuine person so I can... I can proudly stand up or I can say, hang on a minute, you know, because once you find yourself and the right energy then and the right people around you, it's quite a nice thing to be live your life every day and it does attract well, yeah, that's, positivity. That's, yeah, yeah. Well, that's it, the laws of attraction. And that is, it, it's a universal fact uh, that you are who you mix with. Yeah. And you, you can't help that. If you're negative, you will be surrounded by negative people. If you're positive, you'll be surrounded by, by positive, positive people. people. And that's and, and that's how I get by now, and like with balance, I like to work. I like to work. Did, I, did you miss me then? <laughs> <laughs> I like to work a lot, and sometimes it, I can work too much. But I always try to maintain a diary, so I have a diary in my life now, and I look at things that I'm doing and I plan on a schedule, um, and I try to live by it. I try to, if I make a commitment, I try to adhere. Do you know what you're saying that there, Chris? Yeah. I'm probably doing that myself without even realising it. And now since you've just said, because said that now, you just made me, not like I said in prison, you're a bit of a mentor. Even now, you've just made me realise that I form my life to a diary. Mm. But that equals it's just success, it's organisation, yeah. isn't it? Like yeah. for me, I, I so I I worked too much for the last four years. Um, I don't want to, we're going to talk about what we've done. Can since, we just say what I actually do for one second? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're gonna, uh, yeah, yeah. Go on. we're gonna go I'll, on to what everyone's doing now. Yeah, but do I just want to oh, say, so I, 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 now I'm sort of because of the work I do. We've got so many different projects. I can do sort of sixteen, seventeen, eighteen hour days, but oh. it's it's running sort of three or four different things, um, and 
although that sounds like a workaholic type, you know, I've I've got days where I've got certain things that I do. Like if I'm meeting up with my friends, that goes in my phone and then no one else gets booked mm. in that day. Like time management. Yeah. yeah, this is it. But because because I'm running a company, it's hard to it's hard to not do certain things and like especially doing this. So I need to make sure that once we finish recording, all the stuff that's on the memory card gets onto the computer yeah. and then it goes onto an external hard drive before I can delete it off the memory cards and then I've got another one tomorrow. So I need to make sure all the so it's just at this yeah. moment in time things are hectic, but it's because of lockdown. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, what you've been doing is amazing work. What you've been no honestly when you first started doing it, I just thought, yeah. Yeah. And then I think you took me I met you in Leeds one time, that's another thing we did and there yeah. were I wasn't ready for that then. I just I was doing quite well. I think I've been home around two for a year, mm -hmm. two years. Now I've been on five, two and a half. So at the time, I think I had my second hand shop and stuff. And all what things were just. So tell us off. about that then. So you you wrote your business plan in, in prison, yeah. And then what happened when you when you came out? How did all this start? Wow. So uh, I come out. I come home. I had my business plan. My business plan went on back foot for a bit. Like I say, took drugs when I first come out. And like, well, that one time that I knew I didn't need to take them no more, from taking that, it meant nothing to me. Like, why have I done that? Seeing my daughter, looked after her, started having her weekends, I lived with my grandma, and I started studying. It was just like for my CS card, uh, basic maths and English, because I had no, I've never had no. But like I said, when I was younger, I knew I was going to be something when I was older. I always thought I'm going to be something special. I think that's why I messed about quite a lot, because... I knew, like, I knew I would, like you said earlier, you were destined for something, you were going to do something well. I believed I was going to do something well when I was older, no, no matter what. So I uh, come home, start living with my grandma, I was having my daughter on a regular basis, uh, just putting my time into her because I missed so much. And uh, I met my partner, who was now my wife. I always give her a little shout out on these. So you she know knows. what? She's an amazing person. And just seeing how you two work together is. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. It's yeah. it's such a good sort of you. You just make each other. Do you know what? And you won't like tonight before coming up. Leave it, but we are in a kind of a messed up kind of way. We're in harmony, in sync. She does yeah. that. I do that. We she do brings this. out the best in you. Do you know what she most definitely? That's why I just wanted to stay with me a bit longer and just stay because I'm. Could you mean a I, bit longer? Not no, forever. forever. But I'm nearly there. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm nearly. I've nearly got it all just, for just you. Give just give it another year or just so. Just wait. <laughs> just hold on to me. Don't let me go. I know because when she's like you say the workaholic, but you don't know how far you're going. Yeah. Do you know? And I'm trying to get it so not only her but my children and my children and my children's children. Hmm. I've got something to be able to work and live up the rest of the life with, and I'm. I truly believe I'm nearly there. But what you need to remember is... <laughs> He's a pressure to himself, man. That's no way to be a bear. You need, you need to know, remember I'm that sorry, but while you're spending all your time now, <laughs> yeah. you're spending all your time now preparing them for the rest of their life, but you're missing out on I the am, bits yeah. now. I am. That's what bit like, to remember. I looked at my video the other day and she was smiling. She had her own face and stuff, knowing to start doing stuff. And I'm like, oh, she's changed so much, you know, but it's like, yeah. do I want all that or do we want all this? Mm. Cause like when I was growing up, we had nothing, but I had so many memories with my mum making Tarzans and yeah. swing. I can't remember when I last made a swing with my daughter. I got my shoes mucky mm. and got really you knowing mud in rain. I done nothing. I used to love that. Tomorrow I've took a day off. My yeah. friend even ran me tomorrow. To, I'm doing nothing because tomorrow I'm, if it's raining, I'm getting wet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm doing something with my children tomorrow, yeah. definitely for the full day. So anyway, I come out. I met my wife, who is now my wife, and her. Uh, we started being together and she took me out and she started, to, I went in a hostel, it was called Beacon House, it was a dry house in Manny. I'd, I'd, I'd been a bit naughty and uh, it, I hadn't took my key home to my grandma and she had to come to Owen Wakefield at the time. She had to come and meet me at 10 o'clock at night and she said, I can't do this, I'm, you've got, I've been at work, you're going to have to leave my house. So I went, all right, I thought, shit, I've got nowhere to live, I'm homeless. But I thought, at this time I was speaking to Rebecca, I thought, instead of going back to Batley, where I used to take drugs and commit crime, I'm going to stay in Bradford and I'm not going to an hostel. I did that, I went into hostel. It's the best decision I ever made. To just come around and drink, like, you know, drink test you on the night. And they didn't even do it to mine, even though I'd have done it, because I want drinking, I want doing all. I thought, this is where I become. I've lived so long on my own in prison, I can live in an hostel. Started dating Rebecca. She started coming to, At the time, at the first, and this is genuinely, I was going to use her. Cause she drove, I had no money, no, I still needed- Have you told her this before? 
Or is, it, or is this how I've, she's going to find I've out? I've told her this before, but I don't okay. think she believes it, but I was going to use her. So she'd come over, she'd pay for me hostel, she'd get me like a pizza on a night and we'd go out and I started proper really like, she was such a genuine, genuine, lovely, perfect person. Kiss her. As she still, as she still is. I thought, you know what? This woman's put all this energy into me for like a month. I'm going to get a job. So what I did, I found out there were a place in Otley that were taking on through a friend. So I pedalled there to Otley from Manningham Lane, about 12 miles, got there. I once did a little brick course for a week, so I learned how to lay some bricks and like put a mix on. I've gone on to this big site. I rang him first, I went one side at Canal in Otley. It was David Wilson Holmes. I rang him and I said, oh, I'm here now. He's going, are you in golf? I'm like, no, no. He goes, you're not in... He goes, where are you? I said, I'm on, he goes, I said, I'm on the other side, I think. He goes, oh, just drive round. I went, oh, on my push bike. I'm like, yeah, yeah, all right then. <laughs> so I pedal around on my bike and for him, and he's like, oh, yeah, he's like, oh, all right. I'm like, yeah, I need a job. He's like, what can you do? At the time, there's a big silo, and what that does is it, it makes gobble for you and stuff like that, and I'd never seen one. He goes, I'd never seen one, so I didn't know what one was, so you didn't need to make no mixes, because that does it for I'm like, I can put mixes on. I can do that, I can do that, he goes, oh, he goes, we're not really looking for anyone, but I needed a, this job because this, my partner had looked after me so much, there was no way I will, I couldn't go away with it. I said, I've got my, sats, uh, my I've got my, uh, I haven't passed my CSAS card yet, you know, I was going in for it Wednesday, so I should have got it, but I said, I passed my CSAS card, I'm just waiting for it to come by Thursday, it'll be here, I can start Monday, he's like, uh, in a couple of weeks we might need some, cur I said, I can't come in, I need to start Monday, he's like, right, if you can come here on Monday, he give me a silly time at about half five in the morning, quarter to six, down here, starting, you've got a job, boom, pedalled there, Monday morning, piss wet through, raining, soaking, got there, like, he like looked as if to say, as if you got here like this at this time, worked, pedalled home, did that for about three weeks, run it, I run it for about a month, two months. Then I got a, a moped, started thinking, and then that's how I went. And then I did that for a few months. I ended up about five or six months, but I would still just come out of prison. So things were hard for me. I wasn't used to the building site. People were like, oh, no, like my lass had picked me up a few times. I've never mentioned this. And someone was like, yeah, you're a lass and that, this and that. And I'm like, you walk my pit. Yeah, I'll bite you off. Fucking you fucking, off. I just be like, listen, come on here after work. And I didn't, they're like, no, nah, no, nah, we don't mean, oh, go, go get some sky hooks or, I uh, no, like Tartan a big sieve to get all bricks out of this mud from digging and sending me up to the side. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> so I couldn't handle it that much longer, but I don't, I knew if I worked there nine months that my tax back was going to be one, 2,100. Rebecca like, see it out. Got to about nine months. I ended up having an argument around my ass here. Yeah. I said, listen, love, I'm done. She goes, are you sure? I said, I'm done. So I, that's it. Quit my job. Uh, I did a tax return. In the meantime, as I was waiting for it to come to 2,100, I got a little steel erecting job with a guy called Andy. They thought I was mad out. I was working on steel and stuff like that, saving and uh, that 2,100 come through. I bought a van, which was 1,200. Got all my cars made, I got t shirts, insured Rebecca on the van, and with what were left over, I booked 10 lessons and I booked my theory. And with that, with that money, I did 10 lessons, did my theory, passed my test. We had a little van, stopped doing steel erecting. The first day I passed, I got insured, and I've been working every day since. And what, what was the van for? For the for uh, RVR removals. Okay. 078 all your removal needs. Every move <laughs> is a perfect move with our VR removals. <laughs> <laughs> well, my bike got back in one piece. Yeah, they know when I'm round, Jules. I'm not going to lie, you do make me both feel nervous because I know you're my oldest. And here, I feel like being a bit cheeky with I don't feel like anywhere or on any job <laughs> or no, but with you two, I just feel like it a little bit because he's a wise aren't you? You know, it's, it's, it's been around, I'm not sat here with anyone who hasn't done it. Yeah. You know, when I've sat there before and they're saying, oh, but you, I don't know if you get them or if you get them all that. I think they're like, we've done this and we've done it. It's hard to believe her. I'm like, I sit there and I just, not in my job, in my personal job, because I respect everyone in my job. And a lot of people, I think, I think, wow, I can't wait till I've earned enough to buy my own property like this or do this. Or there might be an architect or they might do this and they'll tell me the job. And it's like, 
they don't they don't they do know me on a professional they don't need to know my past you know and mm-hmm. i can get in with them i've met accountants and they help me with this and i've met antique dealers and they help me with my shop and it's been a lovely experience over the last five years i've really not been ready to talk about where i've come from and where i am now do you know I it's think not that's testament to your character that though i think you're a very likable character and i think that you 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 shine through and i think that that makes people want to i'm too far away from mike oh, again no, are you yeah. that all right, yeah yeah we can hear you uh, yeah, so I think that I think you're a very charismatic character, and I think that shines through and, and makes you more appealing. That's uh, what I've until know what until I realized like, we're an officer in block one time. I'd had a fight, been talking, and he goes, "You know what?" And I've never used this word really since. He says, "You're really personable." And once I want to come out of the nick and I ask him what it means. He goes, "You're really personable. You really it's your personality. You're very likable and you're personable. You're a people's person. You're really nice." And I try and use that now with every single, now I know the attribute that I've got and that I can be a really good, nice person. I try and use it with every single person I meet in my life. I think you need to make your business more personal then. (laughs) Make some promo videos and we'll we'll talk about it, man. Yeah, we'll talk about it, yeah, I'm on it. We've got cameras, we'll sell it out for you. Oh, that'll be cool, because I'm thinking about some kind of advert. Yeah, you need that. Do really don't don't make it cheap. If you're going no, to do a cheesy cheap, advert, like, you have to purposely do it do really it. cheesy, like oh, overly no, cheesy. Oh, no. It's my um, boxes. I just want to talk about boxing. I was thinking about a bit of no. No, can you remember the old, oh, wait, under, da, da, da. 10, 66. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's something like, something move, oh, number one, and then it's, also. It's like, a big thing in America, jingles, because they get stuck yeah, in your head. Jingles, yeah, 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 jingles. They get yeah. stuck in your head. Psychology behind it all. Yeah, yeah. And it's, well, you see, like, I'll. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll introduce you to the guy who was there yesterday called Wayne. And that's what he's into, oh, um, advertising, the psychology behind it, how to create something so that people talk about it yeah. um, and stuff like that. Well, After my conversation with him, I've started a Facebook page for the podcast yeah. and started boosting posts. Well, just this is, my conversation. I've started doing that with Boo. And like knowing my business and stuff that I put up on likes that are at certain times, certain things in the day where I yeah. know people don't sat down. And, and I've tried to already, you know, something that does something that might catch people's attention like the law of attraction and i'm trying to do that to people without people even knowing in my business and but you know what you're the best you're the best selling point for that yeah. and again i've i've spoke to people and said I've, i recorded a clip um of somebody else saying exactly the same thing and for five years i've i've helped people and not one of those people i've ever said it owes me anything and yeah. if if they ever get an opportunity that comes up i want them to offer it to me because I'm the best person for that opportunity, not yeah, because I've done them a favour. Yeah. I want it to be, you know, this I I so a tenor then. Yeah, yeah. No, this is I want I want them I want my name to be the first thing they think of because of because the I work that you because do, I put best everything I into what I'm doing, not because I've done something for them in the past. And this is what it is with you. But when you're doing your work, people, all the all the comments that you get on social media for, on your work page yeah. is about how professional That's you are, right. how funny you are, how it's, easy you make things, about think, how people yeah. stress about moving I house. love my job, and I in that job I try. So I know these lads that work for some of them. I know some of them love it and they like it, but it's still a job for them. Yeah. I'm trying to make it. I don't know if I should or I'm worse time. But try and make it their gym, try and make them really enjoy it. That's why when we went van, we have a bit of banter. I'm thinking about getting two cameras in van because if you've seen so much stuff we talk But you should because that's what people are like. If you post yeah. a couple of videos on your social think media, people yeah. can see it. They just think, you know, oh, idiot. Yeah. so we want them. Yeah, yeah. we want them. Yeah. But you know what? The, when, when we're doing it and stuff like that, it's like at the moment I've started selling beds and mattresses and that really has took off. And there's loads of other people doing it, but the thing is, they can't offer the service like I offer. I try and make yeah. it, like I say, that personable and stuff to me and to them where I want it to be. Even if I had one bed that come out that manufactures it won't right, I would not take it out. You know, I want to try and make it the the best I can, you know, for the value and for, even if it's, if they've ordered like a, a little bed and stuff and it's not like a high range or it's still going to be brought with a smile. You know, yeah. I'm still going to have a laugh. And that goes with everything I do, like what you were saying with that. It's like, the only person, if I heard about something like this or something like you do, the first person that comes to my mind is Phil. Yeah. But that's what I mean. I want that to be because I'm doing well at what I'm doing, not because... I'm, you're the only person I'm, I know that yeah, do it. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, <laughs> literally, yeah. No, it's because you, you're the best. I hear the same with Chris, like you do. And you're on that network. It's like, how can I, or how can no one else go ask when they're not living proof of it? Yeah. I don't know if that makes any kind of thing, but it's... I know you've done that. I've been sat with you in a cell and I've seen you've come from the darkest of places as myself. So 
if I can follow it, and I'm a non-believer, me. I'm a non-believer. I've got a friend with me now who works with me, who believes in all sorts and stuff, and I don't believe him because I haven't seen it. Yeah. I've seen this. I've seen Chris. I've seen that side of him. When I felt him earlier, I felt him when he thought, oh, fucking hell, Chris, is that you? You know, <laughs> it's it shows. You know, it's yeah. it, it's living proof, isn't it? And what about for you, Chris? Because your, your sort of after-prison experience has been completely different, hasn't it? So, yeah. Um, like, I'm sick of seeing you in newspaper and stuff now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've been quite fortunate to change my history because if you Google Chris Sylvester from Leeds, Previously, all that come up would be um, sort Here's of national. For me, <laughs> it's because you've just said Google. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, are you going to really have a look? Yeah. Oh. No, it came up with something rules for travelling from Leeds into West Yorkshire lockdown. Oh. So yeah, um, I've been quite fortunate in work that I've done and things that I've been involved with to sort of capitalise on that 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 PR opportunity, you know, and to be able to change my past so to speak so now when when i am googled um i've not got anything to be ashamed of it gives my character substance so that was I, one of my big things there was an evening post story about me getting arrested and the picture was awful and the story was awful and i hated it and now if you google me there's probably 30 mm, positive stories yeah. to that to that one bad that's what of, i need to do lots of images uh and lots of, and, and there's like I'm not ashamed of my past at all, and and I won't change it because, like we said, I entered recovery, started doing twelve step fellowships, uh, and then I was introduced to a recovery program that were based on that as well. So I completed that, and as part of that, um, I started to do some voluntary work at St George's Crypt in Leeds, and. I um, completed the program that they have, the recovery program called Growing Rooms there. So I went and lived there for a year and in and amongst that got involved with lots of different sort of roles and responsibilities, helping the homeless in Leeds. And from that, I was able to sort of access a job as a support worker, leaving um, sort of leaving that program and getting my own residence um, and that's what I did, but also through sort of networking, I was able to meet um, a really inspirational guy called Andy Howarth that's opened um, a charity called Howarth Foundation that helps people that have been homeless access employment. So that's what I do in my sort of primary job. I still have a few other little jobs here and there, um, sort of bank staff support work, helping people. But my primary job is working for our foundation as a client coordinator. So I'm able to work with people that have come through recovery programs, that have overcome the, the demons and sort of bettered themselves and are ready to take that next step. So I liaise with businesses um, wow. uh, and, and show people that the skills that they've had, like Ben, for instance, very, very entrepreneurial, lots and lots of skills. A lot of people I work with, they're not able to see that. But it's my job to, to identify these skills that they have and show them how they're transferable and make them believe in themselves. So I do that, work alongside them for up to a year, find them right job in right industry. Um, and it, always I'm a role model because, like, for me, actions speak louder than words. Oh, massive. Most yeah. definitely, yeah. yeah. So, like, for me, how I live my life now... Um, I try to share my experiences as much as possible, but I have been fortunate in that uh, that's been sort of noticed by a, by lots of different yeah it's amazing. media opportunities and, and and that's been highlighted. So for me, um, I'm really grateful that all the negative aspects of my life now have a positive angle, and 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 there's not like I've said, there's nothing that I'm ashamed of. Do you know? I feel bad about some of the things that I've done, but that's not who I truly was, you know. Yeah. I sit here today as, as Christopher Adam Sylvester. I'm a recovering addict in mid-term recovery. Um, I'm not responsible for being an addict, you know. I'm responsible for my recovery now. The things that I did in addiction, you know, 
um, I'll make amends for them where I can, and I do that indirectly on a daily basis by helping people. Yeah. Mm. See, for, for me, it, w it was tough. I, I, when I came home, I had a brilliant probation officer, and I, there was a job that came up for Leeds City Council, um, and it were, it was in the finance department, but it was an apprenticeship. So I was going to be working with seventeen-year-olds, first job out of school at thirty-one-year-old. Um, sorry, at 30 year old, I'd just turned 30. Um, and I went to my probation officer and I said, I've got, you know, there's this job that I want, but I've also got this application form for a warehouse. I'm guaranteed the job in the warehouse because a couple of people I know work there. Yeah. And the management, they've said they'll get me a job, but I'd like to hold out and try for this, but it's going to be sort of two or three weeks. And he said, okay. And I went for this job interview and I had a tag on just you know i was fresh out of prison still had my still had my curfew tag on and i just had the attitude of my application form tells you i've been there so if i don't talk about it you're going to think i'm ashamed you're going to think it's a negative and when they said to me give me an ex example of a time when you've done this i just said well when i was in hmp wilson i worked in this department and i did this this and this yeah. give me an ex example of a time where you've done this when, when I was in HMP Kirkham and I overly spoke about prison because I didn't want to leave there and have them think I feel like he was holding something back yeah. and it worked I got the job and within sort of three months of doing that job I was told to apply for a permanent job instead of an apprenticeship because the work that they were teaching I'd already done in previous jobs so I was promoted up to this other role um and it was it was okay. It was just sort of office based, uh, spreadsheet type work. And whilst when when I was on my probation, there was something called Right Direction, uh, which is like a volunteer program. So I did that, and I signed up for that. And the um, some a school asked for somebody to come in and do a talk. So they asked me if I'd be up for it. So I went across to Farnley Academy and I met a guy called Mick Amos who used to be a police officer and he was like a safer schools officer at the time. Um, he's got a brilliant company called HMP, not for me. They've kitted out the back of a van as like a prison cell. Oh yeah. It's, it's absolutely bob on. He's got the donkey jackets and absolutely everything. He's got the metal toilet where he, he actually wheezing it and stuff to make it smell, <laughs> to make it smell right. right so nice. I, I, went, I went and met him and I did this talk and I absolutely fell in love with it. A little kid came up after and sort of said, um, at my, I can't remember if it was the dad or the uncle was in prison and they were taking drugs and they thought they were gonna die, but he's gonna tell, in fact, it was a girl, she's gonna tell this uncle or dad, I can't remember which, uh, about my story and maybe he'll change. Yeah. And I was just like, fuck no. See, it's not until now that I myself have kind of realized that bit, not only a good woman, but business, of all my children saved me and I like I can see now with young lads and stuff and I see even the acts that they're doing are, that they'd be good at business Do you know if yeah. they have a little it's idea just getting to focus on something isn't yeah it? because at, at that point I just thought all right what I'll do is I'll keep volunteering and if a school wants me to go and do a talk I'll just take half a day off work and it became an issue because of the job I did I created a spreadsheet from Friday af Thursday afternoon and then that spreadsheet was used in a meeting on Thursday morning. And then that would all get wiped and we'd start the new one for the following week. So if I had half a day off, I'd have to tell somebody where we got to. And then they'd have to tell me where they'd got to and then I'd carry on. So they said, it's easier if you have the full week off. Mm. So me volunteering became an issue. So I was just sort of in this position where I'm not sure what to do. I've got a job for life with Leeds City Council, but this is something I really, I'm really passionate about. So I was at an open mic and I was doing some spoken word about addiction and you talk about sort of the benefits of it. I Someone approached me at this open mic and said, I want you to come and work for us. And it was somebody from humankind. So I ended up being a recovery worker with no qualifications. You know, I didn't do well at school. I had, I think I had one C in GCSE and the yeah. rest were higher, so it was D's. I went to prison, I didn't yeah. get to end of yeah. school. So I, I, I left school with no qualifications or anything. And they've asked me to do this job where usually you'll study college and even possibly university for I don't know how many years to become a social worker or a youth worker. And I just sort of drifted into this job and it went, it went really well. It went really well because all it was, was, if we were going to do an hour's conversation about drugs, there'd be 45 minutes of 
this is cannabis these are the effects of cannabis this is this is what it looks like this is coke and then for 15 minutes at the end i talk about my story yeah um so it just sort of added that bit and then mick the guy from the school helped me start life experience as a company and it's weird because because i'd been to prison nobody wanted to fund us so we started in 2015 and i just worked two jobs for four years this is what i was saying earlier about you know i worked hard for a long time yeah, and yeah. i overworked but i had to do it i had no other choice i needed one job to pay my bills i needed another job to fund the company oh, yeah. and then i needed to do the work of the company at the same time well, that's where we can all get together if you ever need that again we can all yeah well this is I'm, sure, I'm just waiting for it all to sort I'm sure, of start like, again if we ever needed to do something for funding or even a self raise awareness yeah. i believe we could all do it for a cause like this yeah i think there's many teams out there yeah, that we could definitely have. but like i said there's 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 them four years of working my ass off really helped because usually when someone says, right, I've got this funding and we want you to do this, you, if that's not what you do, you usually sort of manipulate your work into fitting what they want. Yeah. Because I funded it for four years, we chose what we did. We decided what we did. Yeah. So now people know us for what we do. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they, they buy into what, what we already do. So now, this time last year, the Police Crime Commissioner gave us enough money for me to quit both my jobs and just do this full time. And then since then, there's been sort of other bits of funding that have come in. We've got a really good relationship with the Violence Reduction Unit. So all different sort of umbrellas from the police. Mm. Um, we've done quite well with funding from. Um, but it's just whatever we want to do. We're talking about um, passion and I, I create whatever projects we're running. Yeah. So I can never say, oh, well, I don't really enjoy my job because it's me who's sat with, so if you're at a school and you're saying we're yeah. having problems with this, I'll come and say, right, well, we could deliver this. Yeah. So I'm creating something specifically for that school. Um, but theatre, podcasts, it's, it's know, same with like what I was saying with, poetry, with Jack all. down there where you get on so long because they're doing something else with funding. And uh, recently in my area, a young, a young lad has just been stabbed and killed, Do you know, and they're getting lads in off there, but they need someone like yourself or like me, myself, to be able to give yeah. them talks on that, on that knife crime. And so that's all I were involved yeah. in all my but life. I'd, I'd, bring a, I'd bring a team because that's literally it, yeah. my job is, okay, so this area here is having trouble with knife crime. Let's find some people who have that as lived experience yeah. and I'll coach them in what to say and how to say it. But, yeah. So I would never get someone to lie. And the reason I won't talk about knife crime is because it wasn't my experience. Yeah drugs, all that sort of stuff, I will stand and talk about. But the thing about life experiences, this is me, this is what I've been through. I so I would never been, get somebody yeah. to talk about something they've educated themselves on. Yeah. Because then we're just like everybody else. I think that's else. why you're going to stand out. Prefer, like you said, when you went for that interview and we self with what you've done and like what I've done, we've all lived it. And I don't work in that sector myself, but I'm here talking about it because you know as yourself what yeah. I've done. But with you, like you said, when they went for that recovery, they are, they're meant to have these grades that if I was sat here with someone now and they were trying to sit in front of me or you are and they had ears and this and they were trying to tell me about cannabis and yeah. ecstasy tablets on a weekend and they were getting off the bangers I'd be like calm down love I don't <laughs> think you want no let's just <laughs> take a minute you know? so I, uh, I when we were delivering those sessions I think there was a good mix of people who knew what they were talking about and then the lived experience. Yeah. But because of that, what I wanted to do is get rid of this bit because that's getting delivered constantly. Yeah. I just wanted to focus on this. The truth, the hard truth. Yeah, duty. this the, literally yeah. this is this is not what could happen, this is what did happen. Yeah. And that's the difference. That's um, why if I ever that's where I'd probably need your help in because like all I can say is you carry a knife, you're gonna either kill someone or be killed, you get caught for it you go to prison you go to prison you can be stabbed you, you i know people have gone in prison normal and they've come out drug addicts i know yeah as soon as you i can only say that's there's no filter on what i say i only know what i've seen what happens to drug addicts they die or they spend the rest of their life in prison i know lads that are big strong lads that have always trained all this and they've, they've gone into the prison and have crumbled They've crumbled, you wouldn't expect, they've crumbled, or they've it's, come out and they've died. It's not an easy place to be, this is the thing. And, you know, when people sort of say, 
what what's it like being in there it's hard to the the thing i try and explain the hardest thing to get your head around is if you're at work if you now feel i'm not too keen on being here i want to go you leave if you're at work you leave if you're out for a meal and you don't feel well you leave yeah when you're there you cannot leave you don't leave now until you've been in a situation where you're held against your will because of your actions you won't ever understand what that feels like no. because you always in every no matter what the situation is in your life you always have an opportunity to leave and go to somewhere where there's comfort that feels safe i, f- I think that's why i spent most of my prison sentence down block because when things got too much or, or i can be in the same place for too long i get anxious so i just blatantly wait for someone walking past an officer and i just hit him straight away and i just go down block now i was just spent straight up onto another wing if i felt anxious about someone or I might not even hit him. I might just hit someone else in front of an officer. Boom, straight back down block. Yeah. Now, to me, that was my escape. I couldn't get out. I couldn't go anywhere. But I will just go down block. Yeah. I'd never say, oh, take me down block. Oh, I need to go down block, so and so. Someone could not be doing all. And that's what I mean. That person from out there might have been brought into prison. There might have been someone like me at the time. And he might hit you. That prisoner like that. I've seen people ask someone for a roll-up before in prison. And someone said no, and they've been it. It's, you think there's us three here now as Chris was saying success stories I believe all three of us are and they're going places in life out of what us three would you say we're three out of 100 probably more than that the statistics it's I don't know with numbers what, what would you say it's sad isn't it I think there's I, I think you could at least add another zero on the end of that. F- us three out of, three, out out of, of a thousand. thousand. Yeah, yeah they become contributing members of society right. even how, how, I don't know how you define success but just won't carry on in that sort of pattern of reoffending and becoming a, another number again and again mm. and again and again and, and, and being back through the system because it, it becomes a way of life. People become institu- institutionalised by it. And for me, prison were one of the loneliest places. But like, like I said, it was just part of my life for such a long time. And the crazy thing about it is I knew by the time that I'd got out I'd be sat in I'd be sat in reception waiting to get out. I'd have told myself I'm not gonna use drugs. But I knew as soon as I used drugs that that that, that clock were ticking and it'd only be a, a matter of time before I were back in prison. Um and the, for however long that would be How many people out there now are just exactly how you But to be fair though, we, we didn't make it first time either, did we? So we, we was a zero mm. for how many years while other people were the three. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's become our time to be the three. So the people that are zeros now that have reoffending, I don't mean zeros in like a, oh, yeah, nothing. No, yeah, nothing. Yeah. I mean yeah, the, the oh, yeah, statistics. They're not. They're not. Yeah. They're not one of the three that are doing well. Yeah. You know, they'll be back in and back in, and then eventually it'll be their time but, to be one of those people. Uh, but what? How do we? How do we make people what see that? What are doing now? Like I, what you are doing now, and you're saying use and discounting yourself. Yeah, that. yeah, I know. You're that's, 28 uh, year old. You've set up your own business by saving by working a job by traveling that distance and working a job that you didn't want to do just to get enough money in the bank to be able to then go on and do your own thing you didn't go to a bank and ask for a loan you didn't go to family and ask for a loan you saved and saved yeah. and saved and did it yourself i just mean personally by the work that you're putting in for others mm. the, the lives that you're trying to say and the physical lives that you that i believe that you will and that by mm. this and the work that you both do that's so in the professional aspect, yeah, aspect of, what of things doing, what we do for I will, like our cause on a night I hope like you go to to sleep and think yeah even when you took a couple of night I was on Chris the other day because one of my friend's dads needed and he put me in contact with someone else now I don't know how that went but Chris without him knowing might have saved somebody's life yeah. you know as we view I, I put there were music musician one time i don't know if he reached out to you but i got you his name and stuff like that and i put him i said this is phil but that's all i could do because i didn't want to be i didn't in the same respect i've got a business and i do stuff i didn't want it to look bad if he if he didn't turn up or if he yeah, didn't this yeah. or didn't discredited the the rep that i've passed on you know if he mm. discredited that because you know so i don't want him to waste your time but i'll always if i believe this guy he played a guitar and that, I've heard him sing, and that was all it was for me. That was it. I've always had time for him. I've seen him, and he's sung, and 
I just thought it was like I need all the time when I see me crying. Every time I see me right fast as I'm be like that and it'd be like, I need to talk to you and I, anyone else I'd just quickly try and go and I wouldn't have talked to him and he'd sing me it'd be like I've written a new song this and he'd sing me and I'd be like he'd be like, I need help this one time he goes, I need help. And he asked me for a job. Now there was no way I could give him a job. As bad as it sounds, I, I could not put my business through it or myself or through that stress. Yeah. And that's why I haven't helped anyone up to now unless to my brother. I've tried helping my brother and But what you don't realise is so NA is about it's not about saying You are the professionals, do you know yeah, what I mean? It's, so. not, it's not about saying you need to get into recovery, you need to do this, this is how you're gonna fix your life. Look at me, I'm amazing. It's about doing something different on a day to day basis, staying focused, keeping yeah. your head clean, keeping your head straight and letting people see that. People who you used to knock about with who were still doing stupid stuff will see you and think you know, look how he's doing. He's married, know what... he's got his own company. Look how he is with his kids. Look how good of a dad he is. Look at the stuff he posts on Facebook. Look at the life he's living. Yeah. How how can I get some of that? I get, no, I get all that. I get all this. Uh, it's very rare. I might get the odd, but I don't know if you was getting all that. The odd little niggly that might try and bring me back down. You know, sometimes it makes me believe, am I really doing all this? Am I really? Do you know why uh, they do that? It's every like couple of It gives of them an opportunity to say, What's the point in trying? Ben did it. Look how far he got, and then he's back here again. Yeah. What's the point in me trying when I know that it's the same with recovery? People get you to relapse because it shows that recovery don't work, and then they don't have to put the effort in. Yeah, is that what you believe? Yeah, that, that's, just, that's, what yeah, I, that's what I. That's what I believe. Negative. They thrive on other people. Yeah. It's like a bucket of crabs, isn't it? Yeah. And, and people that are trying to get out are pulled back in pulled because in. of people that have their own insecurities and their own, their own issues. It's such such a talking about addiction. Coming back to that, that's such a complex issue that has so many different aspects, uh, and it's so agile and it's, it changes constantly. As does a person's character that's in in addiction. So, but coming back to that question about how you change stats and make a difference for sort of getting people to change their lives, I think, uh, and making them not sort of another statistic and, and continue to reoffend. I think it's getting people to believe it's it's massive. Mm. To getting people to believe that they can do the something self. different, yeah. And like when you do get them people that are at that transitional point that. It's about keeping momentum going in it and engaging with services and getting them to 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 address the issues that they have because again each each person it's complex and it's individual in it yeah but I feel definitely. I feel really fortunate to be uh, sort of in the right place at the right time. Do you, you believe know? that what's happened to you because you're in the right place at the right time or did you put yourself in the right place? I don't right know. Time? Like we spoke about. Like like you said, that them things that happen and higher power moments, some people call them, you know. Um, but definitely, for me, I think it would just the perfect storm, so to speak, you know, in my life that that I were at a point where I were at a rock bottom, um, and I had to reevaluate how I were living, and then I'd been fortunate enough to 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 witness people that were sort of shining the light and, and and leading by example so i i reckon it was circumstantial because if you look at my history you know I'd, I'd had lots of different chances that won't first time that i'd been on a recovery wing i'd, I'd like i said I'd, I'd blagged my way onto recovery wings in every jail i'd been to because it were better you know doing more fucking drugs on there if i'm honest <laughs> you know yeah half the time then then than a normal location. Um, so yeah, I don't know, but I'm I'm grateful to be able to be in a position to help people and to 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 get people to see that there is more to life than just carrying on. So what what would you if let's say for example someone who's in a prison serving a sentence could hear this? What would you want to say? Give yourself a break. And give yourself the opportunity to live a life. And what 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 are you doing? And me personally, that was easy for me. Do you know, I used prison when I was eighteen and when I was twenty for them five because I I couldn't deal with life. And when I went in there and realised there was more to life, and if I give myself the opportunity to life, then I could do it. Do you know, just like Chris says, give yourself a break, come out, even if it's slow steps, breathe, go yeah. for a walk. Do you know what I'd say? Yeah. 
I'd say get honest. Do you know what I mean? Get honest and ask yourself, do you know, is this the life that you really want? Do you know, are you happy? Do you know, is it is this is this what you want for yourself? Is it what you want for people around you? Do you know, or are you going to do something about it? Do you know, are you yeah. going to make a difference? Because you can. I think for me it's believing that there's more to life after prison. Yeah. A lot of people get stuck in this rut of what's the point now? No one's going to employ me. No one's going to do this. How am I ever going to, how am I ever going to, who's going to give me? Try to get a girlfriend. Who's going yeah, to, this is a lot it. of people that I hear, and I heard it when I come with you, uh, Phil, I come and we're doing a talk and this, who's going to help me? Who's going to do it? No, I understand it's hard. <laughs> yeah. Do it yourself, man. Is it you? Yeah. yeah, but nobody helps me. I've heard, I'm not going to mention that name because that's a yeah. family. Nobody helps me. No one does this for me. No one does. You've got to work up one day and do it and start mm. by getting this out of bed. It. I've I've tried to help so many people that were just saying they wanted help mm. and that's all it was. It were, you know, like you were saying, like both of you have said actually, you know, and I've done it as well where you say things to certain people so that they believe that this is true. Yeah. You know, you, you say you want to change, you say you're going to stop, you oh, say yeah. all these things and it's that whole... Please, I'll never do you, it again. You, you can tell the people who are actually putting effort in and they're the people who don't need to ask for help. Mm. They're the people who you can see this in them and you can guide them without them having to come to you and ask. Yeah, this is the for thing. people like me, people, they can get to my good nature because they know I'm like that. Like, yeah. You know, so they can kind of, they can get, oh, can I have, can you do, can this, can yeah. But genuine people on it, they don't want no for it. They just want the help. They just want to come with you for an hour. They just want to have a coffee. They don't, they don't want no off you. They just want your, your time. Yeah, for this. me, for me, when I ask somebody if they want to be involved in summer, and the first question is, "Oh, how much is, how much do I get paid?" Oh, yeah. That's it. I'm not interested. What time? Even if there is a wage, yeah. even if there is a wage involved, if that's the reason you're coming to do it, then I'm not. That was, I'm not too interested. I was going to ask if yeah. we get us travel fare back. No, with it being like a it's too late oh, now. You're already here. Oh, oh, should have asked that yesterday. I'm stuck now. I can't get home. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see, the car is pulled up in, man. He don't need no travel fare. <laughs> I should have come in my van so you could have seen it. I'd have loved to get a picture with my van, but I didn't. I didn't know what parking was like. Right. No. Yeah. It's. I mean, even like this, I've. I've started doing podcasts. This and is amazing. When this. I got when I got this studio, I think I'd only done nine. But said, in my head, I'm sort of like. I need to be honest with Chris because I've seen it look cool. And he went on there and you're like, we need you and Chris. And but my, like, your story is way deeper. Now I know why we're all here and we're meant to be here. But we're way deeper than mine. And I liked that much. I like, just get me on. Yeah, if you yeah, can't we, get we him on, sir. We've got. No, because. <laughs> we've got, do no, because I just done that. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what ben, I didn't want to do, do it without you. Yeah. Do you know what Ben forgets? That's what, no, what, this is why I'm not honest. Yeah. I had to say it because. I'd yeah, but felt all like Ben's been going on about is when are we doing it? When are we doing it? When are we doing it? We had a date booked, didn't yeah, we, Chris? Yeah, yeah. No, this we is had the man that lives booked. by his diary. <laughs> we had a date booked, and what happened? <laughs> ben, ben, what me? Ben had to yeah. work. Ben cancelled yeah. because yeah. He had, he, a job came up and he had to cancel. You know, it is though. Oh. Everyone's journey and everyone's story is different. Thanks, and like, Chris. And like, <laughs> you know, I don't think you value yours enough. Do you know, like you, you've said, you, you, I think there's so much still. I'm still a bit young. I'm still. It's like. But look at that. I wish, yeah, I wish that my life would have been as clear as yours at 28. Do you know, do, do you know what? Is that 28? I, yeah, yeah, 28. Yeah, 28. I know it's not too late. Like, it's only until six months, like, being around my cousin and family and looking now at my uncle's made some of his life, even though it's financially. Also, that when I set out with that man and van, I wanted to be a man and a van and make a bit of extra money and pay rent. Now, I believe... That I can have a removal company and storage containers and entrepreneurial buy and sell and going to wholesale and yeah. so I know now that I can actually do that. I never thought I had the intelligence. But as long as as long as that is number two, and that family is number one, and it hasn't been, and that's why I'm glad I'm yeah. here today because I still mm. I'm still not doing it. I still there's value this is, in every experience. You, you, you yeah, need this to work. You need to earn money and you need to put work in because if you're if you're not doing work somebody else is taking them jobs yeah yeah so you, there is that element of it but if you're at a point now where you can get somebody else to do two days a week without you yeah, i probably could then you know you what you're to... perfect for this as well because this is so the objective of this podcast i'm, I'm so i'm led to believe is um to be inspirational for people that are in prisons it's going to be used in yeah. that format now what better a spokesman uh, uh, than somebody that's 
being that entrepreneurial that, that they've designed and created what you have. Do you know you're a success? And now you're employing people. A success. You're a success, though. We all are in his own ways, aren't we? I'm still a bit unhappy, oh, though. We can, until all, we can all get his dicks about, out and sword fight after. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The reason deal. I've invited you both on is because you're both absolutely smashing life. And like I say, it's in two completely no, different directions. You're smashing life. <laughs> oh, look, he's back on. Yeah, here we go. But yeah. honestly, you, you're both doing absolutely brilliant. And because I know sort of the background it's even more of a thing that we need to get your stories out because there are people who are struggling there's people who have never been through as much as what you know us three have been through and they're struggling to sort of make way so i'm hoping that this inspires more than people yeah that have been to prison or that are struggling with stuff it's never and them doubts and but like i was saying to chris before i won't go into that cause, but it's there's going to be that negativity there. there's going to be things there now after just coming on here now it's made me realize even more I've been perfect up to about a week and I've had a few anxieties. But just coming on here now has just fully released them. Like when Chris was saying to himself, then be honest to yourself. Yeah. And there's going to be down days. Course, when I was going for custody of my daughter, there's not times when I didn't cry and my, my partner holded me yeah. in her arms and I cried. And I, I, you helped me out there, Phil, one time. You helped me deliver a letter that led to me getting yeah, full yeah. custody of my daughter. That letter, that's, that's when the process started. And that's from that day. My daughter's been with me from that day. So, yeah, that's... That's it's nice, man. That's, yeah. It's these little things. It's that, these. You know, and you, you put bits of your life together, and this is what I mean. You don't you don't focus on the yeah. end goal too much. No, there's going to be relapses. Yeah. There's going to be bad days. There's going to be this, be that. But you need once you know where you're going, you can actually, towards like you were saying, you can't get out of prison and stuff. Have you ever seen Shark Shot Redemption with that guy yeah, and he yeah. was happy? Towards my last 10 months for my second nice month, I had a big smile on my face because I realised... I see myself doing car books, I see myself finding someone nice, and then I did. I realised where I was going and I became free when I knew where and what what I was going to achieve in life. So mm. even if you're going to have them dark days, you know there's going to be better days. You yeah, know? So, this is it. And I think for you, don't focus on trying to have storage units and stuff. Just do what you're doing to the best of your ability yeah. on a daily basis, basis yeah. and those things will come. Make Cars every day open, count. Doors will open. Doors I think that's open. one that we can take from us all today if we make every day count and do mm. the best we can yeah. every single day. And just don't be a dick. Don't that's be my, a dick. That's my life advice. Get honest, man. Don't be a dick. Get honest. <laughs> Get honest. Get don't be a dick. Uh, genuinely, that's a t-shirt. I appreciate, I'm not appreciate you there. both coming in. Thank I you. I really, really appreciate it. Like I said, I've got a lot of respect for both of you. Likewise. Um, and just, just keep doing what you're doing because you, you're definitely changing lives, the pair of you. No, thank you, Phil. Thank and, uh, you, Phil. I just want to say a big shout out to my girlfriend now. I won't let that one go under the radar. Uh, to Emma, I love you, and uh, you are my rock. Oh, oh. and to Rebecca, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a bigger dick than Chris. I love you, Rebecca, bro. my wife. Yeah, I and I, uh, I love being newly single. Thanks for that, guys. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Genuinely, really. There's dark days. There's really, better really, days. Really appreciate. It. Make every day count. You're single, ugly. <laughs> 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 Not a problem. <laughs> but no, I genuinely, I, I appreciate you coming on. Thanks, dude. All right.